Walter, you've been a boy's life comic character since the beginning of the color comic pages in 1952. Why don't you tell our readers about the comic pages and some of the other characters you've met there? Hey, first of all, never mind calling me Walter. Everybody calls me Pee Wee. And can I ever tell some stories? I sure hope you're an experienced reporter, because I am prepared to tell you everything about the comics. And let me just say, it's great to be out of the comics for a while. I mean, the pictures are fine, but ideas get all cramped up in those comic page balloons. And it's hard to let the words really fly. And you certainly can let them fly. Why, I remember the time when Roy Blakely, he's my patrol leader, and I got this great old railroad car for a scout meeting place. Only the railroad lost us and pulled us to about a jillion other places before it finally got us home. But we weren't lost. No, sir. We always knew where we were. It was the railroad that was lost. Well, me and Roy and Westy caught some car thieves and got stuck on a bridge and the train was coming. But my idea to make a signal and stop the train saved our lives. And I guess I've been a hero ever since. Say, are you getting all this down? Yes, we, uh, we thankfully have a high-speed recording device. But, by the way, could you hold down the shouting? Pedro the Melborough is trying to sleep. Oh, sorry. What do you mean by thankfully? Oh, uh, only that it's state-of-the-art. Anyway, we went down to the Boys Life Damp and Dark Archives Department and looked up the very first Pee Wee Harris comic pages, starting back in September 1952. We read about that mix-up with your railroad car and how the girls at Camp Awani used you as a first aid practice dummy. I don't want to talk about that. But the part about the car thieves and your, ahem, uh, heroism, where was all that? Look, you must be the new guy around here. The whole story wouldn't fit in the comic pages. Didn't you look in the April 1920 issue? That was one of the most famous magazine issues ever. Why, that was the start of the Pee Wee Harris story. It ran for eight issues, 37 chapters. Written down by Mr. Percy K. Fitzhugh. Just the way I told him. Truly amazing. You think that's amazing? You think that's amazing? Well, listen to this. Please, please. No shouting. Remember Pedro. Oh, sorry again. It's just that I thought you'd like to know how I told Mr. Al Stenzel to do the page on the Cub Scout twins back in 1953. So, you're responsible for the Tracy twins? <laughs> well, I don't like to boast, but Mr. Stenzel was trying to create some Cub Scout characters. He said he wanted a Cub Scout who would be as good as I am. And I said, then I guess you'll need at least two of them. And he said, that's it. Twins. So the Tracy twins were born. Are you getting all this? Yes, indeed.